Hey everybody, some gadget guy here to talk about robots. In what might be one of the coolest, geekiest experiences of my life, I spent two days in Pomona, California to cover the DARPA Robotics Challenge Finals. Teams from around the world have been developing robots which can operate vehicles and use tools designed for humans so we can begin replacing people with machines for disaster and rescue operations. One of the most immediate examples people might think of would be the recent Fukushima incident where we had to send human beings into highly radioactive areas at great risk. And hopefully soon, we'll be able to send robots instead. I've been a huge fan of these DARPA competitions since the original self-driving car challenge out in the desert. Over the last 10 years, we've moved from driverless vehicles to humanoid robots. This year's challenge course was designed to simulate a small disaster. Robots had to operate a small Polaris all-terrain vehicle around obstacles, exit the vehicle, open a door, find a valve and turn it off, use a power tool to drill a hole in a wall, flip a switch, navigate over uneven terrain covered in debris, and climb some stairs. The robots were given an hour to accomplish all of these tasks, and while that sounds like an easy lineup, robot operators also had to deal with severely degraded communication, again, simulating poor conditions in the middle of a disaster. Each robot had to be responsible for a large amount of autonomous operation. Teams brought a number of different approaches to robot design. Biped robots were most common but came with more challenges for balance. Everything is built in here. Computers, cooling, power management, it's all gotta be packed in. Jet Propulsion Lab's RoboSimian team designed a really interesting quadruped to address some of those concerns while also focusing on maintenance as each joint uses the exact same actuator. My personal favorite, Carnegie Mellon's Chimp, brought tank tread and a form factor that could morph between biped and vehicle. Team Keist from South Korea, who would ultimately win this year's challenge, brought a full-on transformer inspired by anime robots of old. Hubo can operate as a biped or swivel and fold into a kneeling driving pose. This is the Olympics of robotic engineering. We're ways off from the robots depicted in films like Chappie or Robocop, but the improvements found year after year are jaw-dropping. During the DRC trials last year, teams were given four hours to complete these tasks, and robots remained tethered so they wouldn't fall over. This year, teams were given one quarter that time, and robots had to stand on their own. Absolutely incredible how many teams were able to rise to the challenge and complete all of these tasks. It's all too easy to stand back and laugh at all the montage videos of robots falling over. <laughs> that robot fell over. <laughs> but you miss out on how passionate the competition was. The crowd in attendance yelling, cheering, and celebrating victories, mourning losses. Kids in the stands yelling and cheering on their favorite robot designs. One of the most moving moments of the competition was watching Carnegie Mellon's chimp fall over in a doorway, partially blocked blocking its ability to right itself, and then after several minutes of struggling, eventually stand back up. It's hard to describe in words how inspiring that moment was. Exhibitions were on site to show off robotic innovation from around the world, companies investing in drone research, emergency responder assistance, space research, and several booths detailing robotics, engineering, and programming educational opportunities for children. From Lego creations to full-blown battle bots, there are some incredible resources available to deliver practical STEM instruction to school kids at almost any age. And coming from a family of engineers, growing up reading the robot stories written by Isaac Asimov and being fascinated by data on Star Trek The Next Generation, this was an amazing event to experience, and it kind of felt like home. Just an absolutely amazing couple days of robotic competition here in Pomona. I mean, just absolutely unbelievable. When I first started paying attention to these DARPA robotics challenges, uh, over 10 years ago when uh, they were just roving cars out in the desert, and it was a big deal when a car could uh, all by itself uh, traverse a track, and now we're dealing with humanoid and quadruped robots that are doing uh, an amazing job of filth fulfilling the roles that people uh, would normally have to, to have to take, you know, first responders, military, uh, being able to utilize uh, tools that human hands would need to use. Just unbelievable where we've come in a very short period of time. Mind-blowing what, what the implications that, of that might be moving forward into things like uh, prosthetic limbs and exoskeletons and educational programs for kids, an actual practical application where we can see them uh, developing and utilizing these tools very, very quickly 
quickly and very, very easily. Definitely check out the uh, the DARPA Robotics Challenge online. Uh, if, if you're a teacher or an educator and you're looking for more information for uh, classroom programs for kids, definitely be on the lookout for some of that information. I'll try and link some of it below this video. I, I want to thank the folks at DARPA for hooking me up with a press badge so I could come out and cover all of this amazing excitement. As always, folks, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more videos like these, and I would not be able to continue producing on this channel if you all weren't out there sharing my videos on social sites like Twitter and Facebook and Reddit and Google+. Plus. So please keep bringing more cool people to the party. Hit that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all on the next video.